Hello and welcome to this Icy Point Huna Adventure video as we step off the Norwegian Bliss to see what exciting things this port has to offer. With an abundance of natural resources, wonders and cultural experiences, Icy Point and Huna offer an unforgettable Alaskan adventure. Icy Point is located on an island next to the city of Huna. It is a very small place and there is an airport in Huna, but 90% of the people that come to this place arrive by watercraft. Icy Point is run as a joint venture between the Huna Clinket people and Norwegian Cruise Lines, so it is reasonable to say that if you are visiting, you probably were like me and arrived on a Norwegian ship. Out on the shore here, we can see some starfish. There's a green and a purple one. Oh, and there's a fish right there. Hanging out right. Lots of starfish out here. Yeah. Now, when you get to Icy Point, make note that there are two cruise docks. They're about three miles apart. Both docks are connected by a gondola system. Look for the green gondolas to travel between the two docks. The red gondolas cost money and will take you to the zip lines. Three. This one? Okay. The gondolas at Icy Straight Point are very interesting. They remind me a lot of the ones over at Disney World, but I would argue that the view of the forest is better than the view at Disney World. On the other side of Icy Point and I believe that's the Norwegian Encore over there and we're walking over to the historic cannery uh, you can see an orca statue over here they say it's not uncommon to find orcas here there is an orca pod here don't know if we'll see any orcas out here but if we do that'll be pretty cool if not it was still cool to see the beautiful bay Here are some of the local residence houses here. They have a really nice view of the bay from over there. There's a cemetery here. And some of these, well, most of them are from the 1900s. There's a really old boiler behind the cemetery there. I don't know if you can see it. That's pretty cool. Nice cemetery overlooking the bay as we go towards the cookhouse and the crab shop. The crab house, I should say. Coming to the old cannery now. In the old pier. You can see here is going to be the museum, which is also a gift shop. Because if they have a chance to sell you something, why not? Inside the museum, you'll find some interesting history, like... The fact that the Alaska State Fish is a salmon, that's not too much of a stretch. And you'll learn about John Bell Benson, also known as Benny, who was a 7th grader who designed the state flag and in so doing won a thousand dollars. So kind of a cool story. Over here is the story of Dead Horse Gulch, which was named this way because more than 3,000 horses died when they were overpacked for the gold rush. There was a lot of tent towns here, a lot of people coming for the gold rush, even up here, and not many people actually made it, so as we continue in the cannery, there's the salmon shop, across the salmon shop is the tool shop, you can see all the old tools that they would all have to manufacture here because you really can't get that far, so 
it's always important to have a well-stocked tool shop. All these tools are cool, but if you look closely, you can see it's not that old. Because here's a Shasta Cream Diet Sugar-Free. That was probably from the 70s right there. I mean, it's an old pool cap tap. But it's not that old is what I'm saying. It's from the 70s. Yeah. This part of the museum is dedicated to salmon processing. And you can see how it automated salmon cleaning machines and display of plastic fish heads. This display is talking about the Alaskan bingle. The Alaskan bingle was a token currency from 1935 and they were like food stamps basically but in coin shape and the government would use them but they were only valid here in Alaska and so eventually one man went to Seattle and tried to use his Alaskan bingles for postage stamps and they were not accepted and then after that nobody wanted to use them anymore so that's why they were stopped some more equipment here this is an underwater viewer that you the fishermen could use to see what the activity was like underneath the water just a simple wooden box with a glass viewer at the bottom here's an old canner showing you how everything was canned up don't put your hands in that one here is a smoke smoker stack and then over there is the tribal dance theater we're gonna be watching a tribal show tomorrow so we won't be going to this one in addition to going through and visiting the resort of icy straight point you can buy tickets for five dollars and you can take a shuttle into the actual town of Hunan which is a really small town. There's only 900 people there. You can walk as well, but if you do walk, watch out because there's bear warnings all over the place. By airplane. There are no road connections here. Going in or out. But we do have like about 500 miles of logging roads that we could drive on. Per gallon for gas or 559 per gallon for diesel. We do get two high tides and two low tides every six hours. And the tides do fluctuate to about 24 feet sometimes. Over there is an active eagle's nest in that tree. Don't see any bald eagles, but it's cool to see the the nest all the same here in the actual town of Huna. It's a very small town here. Only a couple gift stores, but that's all you need. 900 people. There are three cruise boats in port today that hold 12,000 people. So we just multiplied the Funa by about 13 by invading their town. I'm sure they'll be pleased when we're all gone and they have most of our money. We're over by the totem maker here. So it's a nice little view there. We'll go over here and see how they make the totems. Totem poles are very interesting. They are all made out of Alaskan cedar pine and they are red from the bottom to the top and they contain all natural elements. No inanimate object can be on a totem pole if it's an official Clinket totem pole. This is their city hall and court. That building over there is the court and this is city hall and the city totem. We'll go see what's on the community board for today. Got the L. Kane store here. Established in 1893. Check it out. This is a cool totem. It's honoring veterans. 
The town of Huna is probably not going to be on your radar when visiting Icy Point. And if it is, most people go to the zip lines, the glacier tours, and the whale watching. There are also food tours, but the charming part about visiting Huna was that it's a town that gives you the real feel of what it's like living on the edge of civilization. And the best part is, at the end of the day, you still get to go back to your luxurious cruise ship. Another Norwegian ship, the Norwegian Jewel, is now in port here. Definitely not as big as the Norwegian Bliss, but still looks like a nice ship. I hope you've enjoyed this self-guided tour of Icy Point and have shown you there's lots of things to do even if you don't have an excursion booked. Thank you for watching. Please like and comment. Have you ever been to Icy Point before? Would you even consider living in a place like this? I want to know. Until next time, remember, adventure is always out there.